Hello class, Mr. Linder here. In this video, we're going to talk about Laboratory 5, Endocrine Physiology and Metabolism. And really, I want to focus on how you guys are going to perform BMR calculations, uh, BMI calculations, and body fat percentage calculations. So before we go over the calculations, just a quick run through on what you're doing in Laboratory 5 and some of the concepts. So in your conceptual reading, uh, it starts out with the idea of what is metabolism. And metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that take place uh, in your body. Uh, and there can be anabolic reactions, those that build things up, and catabolic reactions, uh, which are those that break uh, molecules down. During catabolic reactions, uh, we can generate ATP, uh, and we can also generate heat as a byproduct uh, from those catabolic reactions. As you go through the concept reading, you're going to run across the idea of calories, uh, and calories are a way for us to uh, measure uh, a unit of energy. Sometimes energy is measured in joules, uh, sometimes energy is measured in kilowatt hours, uh, but for the human body, we like to measure energy uh, in terms of calories. So a lowercase c calorie is the amount of energy that it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Whereas a big C calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. So when you look on product labels, uh, you'll see so many calories per serving, and that's using the large C calorie uh, value. So we work in big C calories uh, for the most part when we do physiology. And there are several ways to measure uh, calorie expenditure, and that would be using what's called calorimetry uh, and also using respirometry. Uh, in another video, I'll be showing you how to use respirometry uh, to measure the metabolic rate of a mouse. Calorimetry, though, is another way uh, to measure calorie expenditure, uh, but we do that by measuring uh, the temperature of water uh, as it increases over time. Uh, because, as I said earlier, heat is a byproduct uh, of catabolic reactions, and so as water heats up, we can determine how many calories are actually being expended. What I want to focus on, though, is your calculations uh, that are going to allow us to estimate what we call BMR, or basal metabolic rate. Uh, and then we can move on to, again, BMI and body fat percentage calculations. So your BMR is essentially the amount of energy you need to burn every day to stay alive. This is the basic or minimal amount of energy that must be consumed. So you need energy to run your heart and your liver and uh, breathing, respiratory system, uh, and so forth and so forth. So there's lots of uh, organ systems that rely on basal amounts of energy just to keep yourself alive. So your BMR uh, may range anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 calories per day, uh, depending upon your gender, uh, your height, and your current body weight. So everybody has a slightly different BMR, uh, unless you are of the same gender, same height, and same body weight. Uh, when you calculate BMR, uh, you want to make sure that you're looking at uh, an individual that's been fasting, uh, somebody that just wakes up, uh, so that you are getting just calorie expenditure uh, for minimal uh, activities of the body. Not to be confused with total metabolic rate, which would include activities throughout the day. So we want to estimate what your BMR uh, actually is. Before we go into the estimations, though, if you continue reading in the concepts, uh, you'll come across uh, various uh, hormones that regulate uh, metabolism. And so I want to show you a table. So we'll just scroll to that table. So here we have hormones that influence metabolism and, and essentially affect your uh, bottom line calorie usage. Uh, we have the hormone insulin, glucagon, thyroid hormone, growth hormone, cortisol, and epinephrine. And all of these hormones in this table uh, can be looked at in terms of how they affect your blood glucose, uh, how they affect overall carbohydrate metabolism, how they affect lipid metabolism, 
and how they affect protein metabolism. So as we go through the next unit, you'll be studying uh, these various hormones and we'll be looking at how they influence our overall metabolism and how that ultimately uh, leads to affecting your overall calorie expenditure uh, throughout the day. So for this lab, what I want you guys to do though is calculate your BMR. Let's start with that. And there are three methods that you can use to calculate your BMR. The first method that you're going to use uh, is adapted from something called the Harris-Benedict equation. And what you're going to do, so this is method one for the BMR, you're going to take either the male or female calculation based on your gender, and you're going to use that calculation to estimate what your BMR uh, would be based on your current height and current weight and current age. So let's, for example, take a look at the male equation. What you're going to do is you're going to take this first number, 13.397. If you're male, if you're female, you would use 9.247. So if you're male, 13.397, and you're going to multiply it essentially by your mass or your weight. But your weight has to be in kilograms. So make sure that you take your weight in pounds, convert it into kilograms, and then multiply your kilogram weight by 13.397. Then you're going to add to that this value, 4.799 times your height in centimeters. So make sure you take your height uh, in inches. That's usually the easiest to do. Uh, your 5 feet 2 inches, so convert feet to inches, add the extra 2 inches, and then convert the inches of height into centimeters, uh, and then you can multiply those two numbers together. So you'll have your first number added to your second number that you calculate. Then you're going to subtract 5.677 times your age, and your age needs to be in years, so you'll get a third number here. So first number plus the second number minus the third number, and then you're going to add this correction value uh, that was calculated through the research uh, for Harrison Benedict, and that'll give you your kcals per day, or your calories per day. A kilocalorie is equivalent to one large C calorie. So this is estimating your calories per day for males. <clears throat> Use the bottom equation uh, to estimate your calories per day for females. Once you've done method one, method two is very similar. All you're gonna do for method two is potentially change uh, your kilogram weight value. Method two is looking at what we call ideal body weight. Some of us are at the ideal body weight and some of us may be lower or higher than our ideal body weight. So we're going to look at ideal body weight values and we're going to take that number in kilograms and put it into the first part of the Harris-Benedict equation. So you may or may not have a different number for method number two. You might have a current body weight that's the same as your ideal body weight or very close, so it's not going to change the calculation very much. But if your ideal body weight is quite different than your current body weight, you'll be putting in a different kilogram number, continuing out the calculation, same height, same age, uh, and getting a new calories per day. So that'll be method number two. The way you determine ideal body weight, if you're female, 100 pounds for your first five feet, and then five pounds for every inch after that. So if you're five foot two, it'd be 100 plus 10, which would be 110 pounds for your ideal body weight. Males, you're going to start at 106 pounds uh, for five feet tall, and then you're going to add six pounds for every inch after that. So if you are currently five foot 10, that would be 106 plus 60 more pounds, which would be 166 pounds that you would then use to convert into kilograms and then plug that into the first part of your Harris-Benedict equation and then continue out the calculation. For those of you that may be shorter than five feet, you're just gonna have to use the first value. So if you are four foot 11, use 100 pounds as your ideal body weight for female, and for males, you would use 106 pounds uh, for your ideal body weight. The third method is using 
what's called a heat loss table okay, and a body surface area table. The first uh, table that I show you here is your BSA table or body surface area table. What you're going to do is you're going to take your current weight and your current height and you're going to connect those two dots on the scale by a line and where that line crosses the middle scale that is your body surface area. Your body surface area is in meters squared. So for the vast majority of us we're going to fall somewhere between one and a half meters squared up to about two and a half meters squared. And so everybody's going to have most likely some number between 1.5 and 2.5. <clears throat> so I gave you an example on here. This is just an example. This is not your uh, necessarily BSA, uh, but we have a weight. We have the current height. You connect those together and it crosses at about you know, roughly 2.1 uh, meters squared on the BSA scale. So you would put that in your data section uh, and then we have to find what's called the heat loss uh, for your body. So what we do is we then go to the next table, which is the heat loss table. Heat loss table, very simple to use. <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to find your age or age range, and then you're going to look at your gender, male or female. So for an example, let's do a female uh, that is 27 years old. So here we have 25 to 29, so 27 years old falls into that uh, age range. And then we go over to the values for female and we find how many calories you burn per one meter squared every minute and how many calories you burn per one meter squared per hour. So we have 0 0.610 and we have 36.6. So you'll take those two data points and you'll put them into your uh, data lab report section and then you can use that to calculate uh, your estimated BMR using method three. The last things you're going to do for your personal data, you're going to calculate what's called your BMI. That stands for body mass index. BMI is your weight in kilograms divided by height squared. Don't forget the squared part because that'll mess up your calculation. Also, height has to be in meters in order for this equation to work. So again, it's kilograms. Sorry, it's um, yeah, weight in kilograms uh, divided by meters squared. Make sure you square the number that you get. Uh, so if you determine that you are two meters tall, you'd have to have two squared, which would be four. So you would be taking your kilogram weight divided by four. Okay, so make sure you square that value. Whatever number you get, you put yourself into a particular category and you mark that on your lab report. Once you know your BMI, then you can do this calculation for body fat estimation. So you plug in your BMI into this equation. Uh, the only uh, big difference for this equation for male and female is the value that you put in for sex. Um, for sex for uh, males, you put in a value of one. And females, you put in a value of zero. Basically what that does is that allows males to subtract an extra 10.8% females have to leave that 10.8% in. Uh, and that's because females have uh, a higher body fat percentage than males do. So make sure that you uh, correct for gender. And then you can compare yourself uh, to the table. And then if you have a tape measure at home, you can do the waist to hip ratio, uh, where basically you measure uh, around your umbilicus, and then you measure around your gluteal region, and then you divide those two numbers. And so waist to hip ratio. Your lab report then looks like this. And this is where you're going to fill in all of your data. So method one calculation goes here. Method two calculation goes here. Method three calculation goes down here. BMI calculation goes here. Body fat percentage goes here. Waist to hip ratio goes here. And then you have five review questions to finish up this portion of Laboratory 5. In the next video, we'll be talking about uh, respiration in a mouse. And uh, so you can watch that one to learn about that. Hope this helps. Take care. Bye.